everybody. Welcome to Extension Monthly. I'm Jennifer Davidson, the County Coordinator here with Alabama Cooperative Extension, Russell County, located in downtown Phoenix City. We are so excited for you to be here with us today because it is hot, Miss Janet. Very hot. I melted the minute that I walked outside today. It is hot in the middle of summer. And so we are going to talk about keeping your family safe on your picnics and your boat trips and your July 4th holidays and everything you do outside with all of your food. Um, but before we go, I wanted to let you know that we have some upcoming events here with the Alabama Extension Office in Russell County. On June 30th, we're having a Project Learning Tree training course here. Do you know what that is, Jana? I hadn't heard of the Project Learning so Tree. So Project Learning Tree is sort of a very fun, hands-on program um, where we are training the trainers. So we're going to teach a group of people who will then go out and teach kids on how to interact with nature, okay. information about trees, environment, nature, all that sort of thing. It's really going to be fun. Um, and that's June 30th. And then I wanted to remind everybody, some of this delicious uh, food that we have here today actually came from our Russell County Farmer's Market, which is located on Wednesday mornings from 7.30 to noon behind Central Activity Center and from three to six on Thursdays um, at our new location, which is up there at the Garrett Harrison Stadium. Um, but we have lots of activities going on. If you have any questions about what we're doing here at our Extension Office, you can call 334-298-6845. Um, but we are gonna start today talking about food safety. So I have with me Miss Janet Johnson. Janet, Thank you, thanks for being here. Glad to be here. Um, Janet's our Regional Extension Agent and she specializes in food safety. Um, so she actually covers how many counties? Seven counties. So lots of area of Alabama. Um, and you have a Serve Safe training coming up. Yes, um, for restaurants and people who are inspected by the health department, they do have to be Serve Safe certified. So we will be doing a training here at the Russell County office August 8th and 9th, pre-registration required. If you have questions, just call the office, 334-298-6845, or you can call me directly, 334-703. So, Janet, how much does that course cost? That course is $125, and it can cover the book, um, two days of instruction, and the Serve Safe certification exam. And, of course, you're certified for five years upon successful passing of the test. And so who has to take that again? So folks um, who... Anybody who is inspected by the health department that serves... Um, raw product like we have if you cook ground beef and want to serve it to the public in your restaurant type facility um, nursing home daycares um, anything like that then you have to have this certification it is nationwide so Georgia folks come on over I'm the best teacher in the state <laughs> well very good and then what was the number again? so they can call the office uh, they can call the okay. office 334-298-6845 um, or if they want to have specific questions they can call me directly 334-703-2237. And also dealing with food, mm -hmm. we're also planning a safe and savory food preservation series that will start August 11th. Mm -hmm. It's going to be here at the office again in the evening. We'll do water bath canning, pressure canning, freezing and drying. There is a fee, $10 per class. It will include our food preservation book. Now you only get one book though, okay? Um, you do not have to register for every class, but there will be more information out about that as it gets closer and the information will also be on our website okay. at www.aces.edu and search Russell County. Gotcha, okay, so lots of events coming up. Um, and if you ever have any questions, you can just give us a call at the office and we can direct you to the right place. So we are going to talk today, though, about basic, food, basic safety, food safety, summer food safety. Okay. So we're going to start out one. You might be going to fire up the grill mm -hmm. and do some grilled hamburgers. And so we want to make sure you're doing this right. So one, with your grill prep, if you didn't clean it up before you left, you want to make sure you get out all the old coals, rinse it out with hot soapy water. As far as the actual grill rack, you want to make sure you clean it using a wire brush and then, you know, wash it again with hot soapy water, rinse well. And then you can also kind of treat it with either a vegetable oil on a paper towel or you can also use the cooking oil sprays, you know, the non-stick so your food don't stick to so it. So like on the grill, I always thought those little bits were kind of 
like okay to leave? Yeah. Not <laughs> necessarily. Not if they're charred on, because okay. when they're charred on, that high temperature, mm -hmm. you can actually have some carcinogens mm -hmm. in there. So you really want to remove those before you start grilling for the first gotcha. time. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Not good for you. And then the other thing, even to protect against that a little bit, if you have product that you think might fall through the grill, mm -hmm. you might want to even cover it with foil mm -hmm. and then punch holes in it and that way it also makes That's for a good idea. getting rid of those food bits and easier cleanup. Yeah, we used to have a charcoal grill and the grate was very wide and it was easy to clean, but now we have a gas grill and it feels like it's very hard to keep clean because of the way the grate is. Yeah, and so it is just it depends a removable grate? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. well that means you can move it off and you can also use like some of the oven cleaning to get rid of that, you know, let it sit for a little while, right. penetrate, I didn't use think that, about that wire brush, mm -hmm. and then of course you still want to wash it with hot soapy water and rinse well to mm -hmm. remove that chemical. Gotcha. Okay. So we're going to so clean the some, grill first. Clean the grill Ugh. first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know work, but if you do it <laughs> at the end of the season, then it should be nice and ready for you when you get ready That's to start true. up. So we're going to do some ground beef and we're going to show you proper handling of raw meat. You want move. So, first, food safety, first step, always wash your hands with hot soapy water, as hot as you can stand it. And just so you know, hand washing should take at least 20 seconds. Dry with a single use paper towel and use the paper towel to cut off the water. Got to get my cutting board, which should also be cleaned and sanitized, already done. So we're going to open up our ground beef. And I'm just going to show you how to pat out one. Now you can season it ahead of time or you can season it on the grill, however you want to do it. But get, okay, here's your, you know, a serving. We have to do the nutrition aspect too. Should be about four ounces. I didn't pay any attention to how much this packet was, so I'm estimating now. Okay, so you're going to pat it out. And then one of the things, you want to make sure you're putting it on a nice, clean plate. You're going to pat it out. So I'm going to set this aside because then we're going to show you how to do vegetable prep. And after you've handled raw meat, next thing you need to do is wash your hands again. I know a lot of times some of the other places you may not see it, but they're always washing their hands after they've handled raw meat and before they're going to go to something that's already cooked or raw that will not be cooked. So again, proper hand washing. And now Jennifer, we're going to get the prep ready for our hamburger. Okay. So we have tomatoes. Now one, with your tomatoes, when it's a whole tomato, you can actually leave it sitting out on the counter at room temperature. But once you do some slicing, mm -hmm. and we're going to cut a couple of slices here. Okay, that wasn't a very good slice. Might and I noticed go. you had a, a cutting board with the meat, but you didn't really have to use it. But you are supposed to either you want to use different ones separate or separate cutting boards if you can for your vegetables and your raw prep, your meat prep. Mm -hmm. So once you've cut that tomato, what do you think you need to do with this now? Um, put tin foil over it and you leave it on the counter. Cover I don't know. it. Okay. <laughs> and we can either put it in a bag. Mm -hmm. But the one thing you want to do once it's cut, okay. you want to get it into the refrigerator. Okay. So we're gonna. So go a ahead sliced and, tomato goes in the fridge. A sliced tomato, once it's cut, goes into the fridge. And, okay. Next, and we're gonna put this one aside and get our nice clean one over here, because now we have some fresh lettuce. Now a lot of times people want to wash their lettuce and get it all prepped and then put it in the fridge. That's actually not the best thing to do. You only want to wash your fresh produce like this before you're going to eat it. Because when you add water to it, 
then the bacteria that are present can then cause deterioration. Is that right? Okay. Yes. And, and I know with call strawberries, it the spoil I know like stuff. in strawberries or berries, I know you really can't you, wash them and then keep them. You have no, to you want to wash them just before you eat them. Keep them in the fridge, keep them cool. Gotcha. The other thing with your lettuce, you want to make sure you pull the leaves apart okay. so that you can wash down in between. Okay. And then again, you would want to pat them dry. Okay. And you can put them in a bag in the fridge, or mm -hmm. again, you can put them on a clean container. And of course, separate containers mm -hmm. for each food so that you don't have what we call cross contamination, which is the transfer of bacteria from one surface or food to another. Okay. So you want to avoid that as well. Okay. So, do you have any questions? All right, so what about onion? I have a question about onion. So if you were to slice that onion, is it the same as the tomato or not really? No, onion you don't have to worry about putting in the fridge because okay. uh, as far as the hazards, it's not as hazardous as a tomato. Is. Okay. And part of that is you do have a lot of germs in the air that we do not see with our eye. Mm -hmm. And once that tomato is cut, it can get on there and start causing spoilage. Okay. And that, with the onions, not really the same thing. But I'm not going to okay. slice this right now mm -hmm. because one of the other things I want to talk about is when you're doing a lot of outside or if you're going to be going outside, you're dealing with a lot of product that you also want to keep cold. And so I want to talk to you about how to keep it cold okay. when you're outside. So we'll do the onion a little bit later. All right. All right. So we also have like a pasta salad here, which I think is a pretty regular thing. I mean, besides chips to take with you on a picnic or... Or, or even potato salad. Potato salad. I mean, when you're looking at doing outside, your typical menu might be your grilled burgers with your condiment. You might have a salad, mm -hmm. chips, and a lot of times pasta salad, potato salad, mm -hmm. or the type of salads people Slaw, would use. things like that. So, yeah. So we have our ingredients here. You're going to do a macaroni pasta salad. So we've already cut, notice we've already washed and cut and prepped our vegetables and put them in a nice clean bag. So we're going to add them to it. And this is sort of like a ranch based salad, but um, sometimes I make them with mayonnaise or something like that. And I've always, my mom always was real careful. We weren't careful about a lot of different foods, but the <laughs> foods that had mayonnaise in them, she is always worried about them staying cool. So what's the you rule about that? You want to keep them cool. But the key that a lot of people don't realize is with commercial mayonnaise, it is chef stable. And in most cases, when people would get sick, they would always want to blame the mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. Well, with processed mayonnaise, it's probably not the mayonnaise is so fault. shelf stable means you can you don't have to put it in the fridge well once it's open oh, oh okay once it's open you want to store it in the fridge okay but as far as once you've made the salad and mm -hmm. mixed it all together right when a lot of people think that it is is it going to come out yeah that it is bit. the mayonnaise mm -hmm. it is not the mayonnaise the mayonnaise has been treated so that you're not going to have a lot of bacteria growth the cause of most of the issues is going to be the handling of the product. You've cut, you've cut and cooked potatoes. Mm -hmm. You've cut and cooked, I mean, or cut your other ingredients that you're going in there. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't properly wash your hands or you had cross contamination, that's where a lot of times your bacteria. Gotcha. Or you cook those potatoes, then properly cool them. Then you've allowed the bacteria to grow. The mayonnaise is probably not the problem. It's the handling of the other ingredients. Gotcha. And so, so once for you've like a pasta salad, like this how all, how long could you? I always worry about leaving things out, either in the house or when we're eating outside. So how long is the general rule? The general rule of thumb is during the summertime. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it gets very hot here in the south, especially 90 degrees mm -hmm. and above. If you're going to be outside. You really want to get stuff refrigerated or cold within one hour. Mm -hmm. And so have a cooler. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that you want to do is you want to have a cooler for raw items that may not be cooked, like your meats and things like that. Mm -hmm. And you really want to have a separate cooler for your vegetables, things that may not be cooked. Okay. The key to food safety also mm -hmm. is with a lot of your germs, cooking is going to kill them. Right. So you don't have to worry about those quite as much. But with your raw ingredients mm -hmm. that won't be cooked, then it's a matter of, thank you, Jennifer, mm -hmm. it's a matter of you want to keep those cool to minimize bacteria growth. So once you've mixed it, even if you're outside serving, mm -hmm. you can have a separate container of ice. 
because again, you know, you don't have a refrigerator handy. Right. <laughs> so you can actually mix it up and then sit it on ice. And that's going to help maintain the temperature. And again, when you're outside, you want to cover it because you also have insects Flies, and yeah. things like that flying around. So you want to cover it. And the other thing that you can also do is you can have portable containers with lids mm -hmm. that you can also put the product in. You can also keep them on ice that way. But that also protects and keeps insects and other things out as well. Very good. Well, thank you, Miss Janet. We're going to take a quick break, um, but before we do, I wanted to mention to y'all again that we have several upcoming events here with Russell County Extension. We've got the Project Learning Tree Workshop that is June the 30th. Um, that's for, it's kind of a train the trainer program where we are going to provide lots of fun and exciting hands-on activities to get kids at, uh, excited about learning about the environment. Um, so if you have any questions about that, you can call our office. And then also a reminder that we have the Russell County Farmers Market every Wednesday uh, behind Central Activity Center from 7.30 to noon. And then every Thursday in the Garrett Harrison Stadium parking lot from 3 to 6. Um, so I would encourage y'all to come out and see what our local farmers have. It's good to eat uh, fresh, healthy vegetables. And these are all locally grown. Um, and very reasonable prices. And it's also kind of fun to go out and get to pick, um, you know, things that you don't always see in the grocery store. Exactly. So that's very good. That way you can try it. Um, if you have any questions, you can call our office. We're at 334-298-6845. And stay with us. We'll be right back. break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. It's time to take a road. Alabama's got a hundred road trips, and if you love the sun, you're gonna love Mobile, where Mardi Gras is king, and the accommodations will make you feel like royalty. You can take a little drive, explore Dauphin Island, or explore the past. We're talking the USS Alabama. Check out these big guns. Alabama's got a hundred road trips. Plan yours at alabama.travel. Which one you gonna take? Welcome back to Extension Monthly. I'm Jennifer Davidson, County Coordinator here with the Alabama Extension Office in Russell County. And I'm here with Janet Johnson, our Food Safety Regional Extension Agent. We've been talking to you about how to keep you and your family safe this uh, summer season while it's hot as blue blazes outside. And so we want to continue talking about that. We padded out the meat and you talked about hand washing, but what's something else that's super important? Well, one of the things, you know, we have a separate plate for a raw product when we're taking it out to the grill. And then after we cook the product, we want to have a clean plate to put the cooked product on because this will have raw juices and we don't want to cross contaminate our product. But even though you've cooked it, how do we know it's done? Oh, well, it's nice and brown. Nice and brown is not a determination of cook temperatures. And meats do have a temperature that they need to be cooked to, and so you want to make sure you have a thermometer so that you can check the internal temperature of these items. So for our patted out hamburger, we want to cook it to at least 155 degrees. If you're doing poultry, chicken, you want to make sure you are, even if you're doing turkey burgers or chicken burgers, you want to make sure those are cooked to at least 165 degrees. And then, of course, we have the easy item to grill, our hot dogs. And you're like, hey, they're already cooked. <laughs> no, your hot dogs also need to be cooked, and you still need to cook them to at least 135, 140 degrees internal internal temperature so use a probe and you know you can buy digital ones that might have a thinner probe that you can use but 
use a thermometer to check the internal temperatures of your food because you want to make sure it cooked because you don't want to make anybody sick. Now once you've cooked and you've eaten, um, how well first of all when you cook burgers how long can they kind of hang around until you need to make sure everybody's eaten and you put everything up? Well again when it comes to handling those leftovers you don't want to leave any food sitting out actually longer than 30 to 40 minutes. You want to let it cool a little bit so that it's not very hot, but then you want to properly package it. And again, you can use plastic containers. You can leave it on your clean plate, wrap it, put it in the fridge, but the plate is going to be, you're going to be eating it again a little bit later. If you're doing it for storage purposes in your fridge, you want to wrap it and you want to date it, believe it or not, with the date that you prepared it. And you want to use them within about three to four days if it's something you prepared in That's house. what I always think. Now, mm -hmm. if you've done hamburgers and you, you know, your neighbors didn't show up like you thought once they smelled those hamburgers, you can also freeze them. Oh. And so when you freeze them, you're looking at, again, date. <laughs> and let so you know when it went in and you're looking at about probably about three to six months then okay. and of course make sure everything once you bring it back out is reheated to at least 165 degrees gotcha. make sure you've killed anything okay but and that can your pasta salad remember when we made some pasta salad again refrigerate and use within two to three days again gotcha so to be on the safe side two to three days Gotcha. Two to three days. I like that because I always worry about food in the refrigerator. My husband's willing to like eat it. I don't even know how long. He smells it and says, it's fine. And I say, I, I don't no, know. You can't always <laughs> go with the bacteria that make you sick. You can't always go by the appearance of it because those, you can't see them. You can't smell them. Mm -hmm. You cannot taste them. So it's always better to err on the safe side. I'm going to remember that. When in doubt, mm -hmm. throw, it, throw out. it out. That's what we tell people <laughs> on the phone here. Okay. okay, very good. So we talked a little bit about our Russell County Farmers Market, which we hope y'all are going to go out to on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Um, but now that folks are out there buying all that produce, tell us a little bit about... Yeah. You know, fresh produce doesn't have a very long shelf life. And so a lot of times you can freeze it, but sometimes you're going to get textural changes. So a lot of people might want a can. And that leads up to our Safe and Savory Food Preservation Workshop. So once you bought this product, um, product we're going to be doing a food preservation workshop where we'll tell you how to safely freeze the product. We'll tell you how to can. And we know there's actually two methods of canning. You have water bath canning, which is going to be for your high acid things like your fruits and things like that. You might want to do cucumbers and make some pickles. I can give you the directions anyway. Um, and then you have the other produce like your vegetables. And with those, you're going to want to pressure can though. So we have actually some green beans that we canned in a previous workshop. So we'll show you how to use that water, that pressure canner, how to do it properly because again you don't want to kill anybody. And another product that grows very well, tomatoes, tomatoes, mm -hmm. tomatoes. What are you going to do with all those tomatoes? Well you can can those in a water bath or you might want to make you some homemade spaghetti sauce. And we'll show you how to do that as well in these workshops. This will start August 11th here at Russell County Extension Office. Well, that sounds fun. So you said one, one day will be on canning. Yeah, we'll do one day two, on freezing? Canning, two okay. canning methods, water bath okay. and pressure. Okay. One day on freezing. Freezing. And another method that a lot of people are getting into, dehydration. We okay. can show you how to dry it where it can last a lot longer as well. Very good. Well, Miss Janet, thank you so much for coming here and being with us today. Hopefully we've reminded everybody on tips on how to stay safe and make sure everybody's family stays safe and doesn't have like a rotten summer from a no, stomach bug or something. You don't want to get sick. That's no fun. <laughs> yeah. That's no fun. If you have any questions about these or any other extension programs, you can give us a call at the office at 334-298-6845. I'm Jennifer Davidson, the County Coordinator with Russell County Extension. And, and again, I'm Janet Johnson, Regional Agent in Food Safety and Quality. Thank you so much for being here, Ms. Janet. Thank you, Jennifer. And thanks for watching us. See you next time.